know what they're saying. What they're saying is the part of the reason that black women don't date out is because men from other communities don't want us because of X, Y, Z and this, that and the other. Meanwhile, is because men from other communities don't want us because of X, Y, Z and this, that and the other. Meanwhile, you know that it's loyalty. I know that it's loyalty, but they're not being loyal to you. They're just going out with whoever they think is pretty and nice. They're favoring people who have the, the of their oppressor waiting for you. What they're doing is they're going out there, they're listening to all different types of pop music and all different types of the, the genre and dressing and styles that they feel are going to attract. While you're over there listening to your R&B, your rhythm and blues music and your, oh, I love you, oh, anything you want from me, oh, I do for you. While over there listening to your R&B, your rhythm and blues music and your oh, I love you, oh, anything you want from me, oh, I do for you. While you're listening to that, they're out there with their damn plastic neon shades on. Extraterrestrials, strange phenomena, missing persons, lost continents, myths, and monsters. We examine these mysteries to determine, are they bullshit or not? Hello Knockouts, Tanya TKO here, and I don't, I don't even know how to get started, but um, right now I'm in California, I'm living in my car, I've been living in my car for the past few weeks, and I have been dealing with this and trying to work it out and I just can't figure I can't figure out how to get out of this situation as you know I closed my business um, I closed TKO skin July 2014 and I had about enough money to last a year and um, And I think I think we did pretty good, you know. When I when I got to California a year ago, and I realized that I closed my business six months before that, I knew that I had to stretch my money for another six months, and um, and so I went to Central and South. I went to Central and South America to write my book. And as you know, I got robbed my very first full day in Guatemala, robbed violently, and that sent me going southward trying to find some place safe to write. And you guys were with me along this trip and you know that it was a really hard trip. And so I came back from the trip without the books. So it was my intention to sell the books and to be able to even go on a tour and do different seminars and conferences or whatever, but the books never got written. And I had a little bit of money after that, enough money to get to California and get an apartment. And then, I don't know if some sort of as a poetic justice or whatever, I, um, I never filed my final filing, my tax filings for TKO Skin. In New York State, it had been accruing over the past year and a half, and they when I got to the, when I was at the airport, I started receiving these emails and I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? And the emails basically said that New York state had levied my bank accounts. They emptied all of them, even the PayPal's. And so it was like, I'm at the airport. And if I would have gotten that message before, it's like this, everything just like the perfect storm. If I would have gotten those messages before, I would not have come out here. And then, so I come out here 
I have a friend who owes me a few thousand dollars. And I've been waiting for, I've been like trying to pull together any bits of money that I had in different places. And I have a friend who owes me a few thousand dollars. I thought he was going to come through for me because when he was in need and I lent him the money, I always thought that if I was in need, that he would come through. You guys remember my friend, the bear, way, way back. He and I, we've been friends for 10 years. And those, those of you who are, who were with me in 2008 when I was making the videos out of that, out of, when I was in Harlem, you guys remember my friend, the bear, and how he would participate in the videos and give advice and information to everybody. My boy. I always thought that if, because you know what, it had been five years since I lent him the money, and, I, oh, and he always would say, oh, I'm going to pay you back, I'm going to pay you back, right? And I always, and you know, I didn't press him for it, and I always thought that if worse came to worse, that he would be there for me, but this man has, huh. now he, he won't even answer my calls, he won't even answer my calls, that's how he, how he's doing me. And I'm so silly. I'm over here thinking something happened to him or his daughter or something. And I'm like, I'm like, are you okay? Is your child okay? Is everything okay? Silly me. Don't realize that he's avoiding me. And then I, you know what? I finally, I finally broke down and I was like, listen, I'm living in my car. I told you I need this money. And he texts me back finally after weeks. And he was like telling me that he doesn't feel that he owes me the money. And that is my fault for letting it accrue and that I should have paid it off a long time ago. Long story short, <clears throat> I lent him as much money as I could, as much cash as I could. And when I couldn't lend him any more cash, I, when, I, when I didn't have any more, I, I let him use my credit card. I have no love or give a shit about... Uh... Slap nuts here, okay? As as uh, Tanya TKO, I usually say that she uses that last uh, TKO because the it looks like she knocked herself out in an epic bout of self hate and shit. That's why she has those big coarse denture teeth, and you know, and you know, just not feeling the whole ice cream bob thing and the excessive male hatred and the, the incessant videos attacking you know men of an ethnic group that we share. Okay, I don't know if she's a you know, she's indigenous here to this country or not or anything. I don't know any of that bullshit. I just know she's a big fucking mouth. Okay, she's a big mouth. She takes shots all the time and she attacks us, not just here in the colonies, but all over the fucking planet and shit. She was recently chasing that that, you know, that simp Austin Hollerman and shit, okay? I guess we can say that right now because he, he copped out and shit at the, you know, uh unwittingly positioning himself at the head of that the whole passport bros thing and shit really just men taking vacations by the way all right she takes shots all the time and i was recently looking at a goddamn video posted by bunker tv he was laughing at her about some stupid shit that she was saying and i was, went back and i was looking at it today and you know i saw that he had left me a comment but you know i scrolled down the comments and somebody had left the link there I want to thank that gentleman. He had left a link that uh, was from seven years prior where she was stuck living in a car in Los Angeles and shit, okay? And I, you know, I clicked on it, you know, looked at it, had, you know, my reaction, you know, started with some laughter. And then I thought to myself, you know, self, back in 1990 and shit, okay, 1990. I had to make a, a, a fucking decision. I had to make a life-changing decision and shit. When I just uh, up and did a Cooley High, okay? If anybody knows that movie, anybody old enough to know the Cooley High movie, I, I reenacted re the end of that movie. I was preacher leaving this bitch, okay? Leaving the south side of Chicago because there's nothing here. Nothing here. So I did a cold jump over across 2,554 miles to the west coast. All right, and it was not an easy ride. I didn't have any help whatsoever. I squeezed blood from a rock. Okay, I've been places you wouldn't fucking believe and seen things you wouldn't fucking believe. And I thought about slap nuts here and shit. You know, that she, you know, seven years prior, she was stuck in her 
in her fucking car. You know, she was stuck in her motherfucking car. You know, with no help, no nothing. Okay, apparently. All right, so, you know, I listened to the bullshit and still had a laugh because I know what she would become in the future, that she would become the Lex Luthor of, of these uh, uh, divested and swirler shits and just a general nuisance. All right, but like going back seven years, you know, and it's kind of like that whole thing if you could go back and get Hitler as a baby. So, you know, I thought about that, but not, not, in, that, not in that darkness, okay? So, like, what I'm going to say right now is I'm talking to that Tanya TKO from seven years ago who probably wouldn't have fucking listened to me, okay? She wouldn't have listened to me or shit. I don't think she would have been intimidated by me, but she wouldn't have listened to me and shit. She probably was ignorant back then, too. All right, she's living in her car. She's, you know, the female finesse is something else. I got to tell you. <laughs> the female finesse is something else, man. So I'm going to tell you, your ass, I'm going to talk to your goofy ass from, from seven years prior, okay? I'm, I've gone into DeLorean and gone back in time to talk to your goofy ass seven years ago when you was in your fucking car and you got hit by the IRS. You got hit with a lean and shit by the IRS while you were traveling and shit, okay? All right? All right, there's this thing in Los Angeles. I'm going to tell you how to get out of this situation. There's this fucking thing in Los Angeles. This is organization. All right. You might have heard of this. It's called the Department of Public Social Services. Okay. You go over there. Okay. You go over there and uh, you tell them what's going on with you and shit. Right. You tell them you're living in your car. You're a female. Didn't look like you have any kids or anything in there. I don't know if you shitted out any babies recently or uh, back in the day. I don't give a fuck. So you take your monkey ass over to the Department of Social Services. And I guess that would have been downtown L.A. So your ass is already in the shit in downtown L.A. If anybody's ever been to Los Angeles back in the uh, decade and a half or two, you know that down there, that shit was just like fucking uh, like Mad Max. Uh, it felt like Gotham City. All the Gotham Cities you ever saw in every Batman movie except worse. You know, RoboCop, the first RoboCop, feels like shit down there. It's pretty fucked up. You see some fucked up shit down there. I'm not going to go on a tangent. But, like, you go to the Department of Social Service. You make it there without being kidnapped or trafficked or eaten outright. And you tell the motherfuckers what's going on. You're going to have to go there like 3 in the morning. Okay, 3.30 a.m. And you're going to stand in this long fucking line. There's going to be a shitload of immigrants out there. Like, you know, it, you know, maybe illegal immigrants and shit. Gonna be some people with mental issues. Gonna be a shitload of black people out there, black men and women. You know, some of them gonna have, have be criminally minded, so you can't really talk to them. You have to play it off. If you got a hoodie, you know, to do you the best, look less like a woman as humanly possible. Uh, you go to this Department of Social Service. You're gonna sit there from probably like seven in the morning to about three thirty in the afternoon and shit. Okay, and you're gonna sit in front of that fucking a social worker, she's going to bring out this, she's going to, you're going to have to get an electronic fingerprint, right? And you tell her what your deal is and shit, and you give her your information. I'm going to tell you right now, do not give her your ID from New York. Just say you don't have any identification. Just give her your social security card if you have it, okay? Just give her a social security card. They're going to electric fingerprint your ass. They're going to give you some fucking money. Right then, they're going to give you money for clothing, they're going to give you uh, um, uh, money for money, whatever the fuck. And because you're a female, they're going to give you an option of going to a, a number of shelters. Okay, there are a number of shelters. They're going to give you uh, uh, some paperwork that will tell you where you can go as a woman and, and find housing and shit. And to use a bathroom and to wash your ass. Wash your ass, okay? All right, and that's, that's for starters. You get back in your fucking car and now that you got some money. You can go to a decent gas station. I would, uh, you need to drive all the way up by fucking Broadway, Broadway, downtown LA. You need to drive you know, somewhere near there and get a gas station. Like, uh, you know, a couple blocks up, a couple blocks over past Broadway North to get a gas station without getting your ass whooped. Okay. Then you can gas your car up now that you got a little bit of dough on you. You know, then you probably get an EBT card. They're going to give you some cash or a voucher or something. They're going to give you that paper. You can use that paper. They call these shelters, call around, 
and find one that you you can fit in. But you need to get in quick because they only have a certain amount of beds to get in that motherfucker. And trust me, back in the day when I was down there, that shit was no man's land. Okay, you need to be down there. That's like some shit. They need a superhero. They need the the Christian Bale, Batman, and Robocop to be the cops down there. Okay. Yeah, so getting back on the shit here. Yeah, once you get a little room and shit and everything, you can put everything in your fucking trunk. You, I tell you that since you got a few little bucks, okay, go park your shit in a downtown parking garage. All right, and then you walk a couple of blocks, you're gonna go to this place called Chrysalis. All right, the organization that helps homeless, a nonprofit. You fit the bill. A single black woman lost down in the dregs of downtown with the. Dreads of humanity, mostly black men and, and, and illegal immigrants and crazy, assorted crazies and people from the alternative community that even they don't want. Okay, and then mutants and other shit is down there. Trust me on this. Trust me on this. You'll see some inhumane shit. But if you're a woman of any kind of integrity and fortitude and you want to stay your ass in L.A., you're going to go through the, you're going to walk through this fire. You're going to walk on that razor blade and shit, okay? But obviously, it didn't work for you because you... You seem to be back in New York. I don't know. Somebody can correct me down in the comment section. I don't give a fuck. Okay? Basically, what I'm pointing out to you is that you have options when you got there. Okay? You have more options than I would have. Like, you know, I actually stayed in, in, in a shelter down there. It was an incredible experience. I never forgot it. You know, it made me think that, you know, when I later in life, when, you know, when any of my children would talk shit, I would just take them to downtown Los Angeles and leave them in the, the crackhead park down there. There's a ton of shelters you can go in. But I would advise you to go to the Department of Social Services and shit. Check in with them bitches. Don't give them, don't show them your fucking ID from your home state when they ain't giving you shit. Just give them their social security card, anything else you have. And they will issue you uh, you know, funds for clothing, for uh, general spending and shit, and, and direct you to a shelter. Right, the whole thing is a grift. Right, it's a grift, and they even back in the day they would pay for you to get a California uh, ID or driver's license. They would actually give you a voucher. You could drive your ass over to the DMV and, and get a get a fucking uh, you know get a driver's license, a California driver's license. A black woman, okay, a black woman shit. All right, been down through the shit. You know some of these shelters, you know. When you go to the Christmas organization, and there's a bunch of other organizations. They will lo they love like you know hard luck cases like you. You're easy to handle. Supposedly you're a woman and shit. You're in New York. You had that little saucy attitude. You, a lot of white guys around there, so you could just be in heaven. You know, a lot of white guys down there just doing time because they need to add that shit to their resume. You know, they go home and fuck that white woman that they have the, the high value, unlike yourself. And you know, who knows? They might you know hit you in the back room back there. You know, give you a little job. Answer phones and you can go back there and put your reach down and grab your ankles and shit and you hit that shit proper. You know, and that's a good you, you gotta start there, okay? You gotta start. They'll help you find a job. Yes, they will. All right, but nothing comes for free. You know, you you wanna go live on the West Coast. Someone's you someone's gonna have their hand in your pocket, in your back pocket, up your dress, until you you go dark and then you gonna put your other hand it's somebody else's back pocket and shit. That's the way it's supposed to be. Unless you got any, uh, unless you got any integrity and shit. Unless you got any character, you know, any of your real shit, you know. I was there for a minute and shit. And that's as much as myself, of myself as I want to give you. But this is the information that I was giving you in that time and shit. Right now, the only thing that I could possibly give you is my middle finger, bitch. This message has been paid for by the Dusties. Yes, the niggas you love to hate.